The Tor project seems to no longer be taking their most security-focused users into consideration, which is a real shame considering that the Tor browser is not just the most commonly used gateway for accessing the dark web, but it's also the most commonly used tool for people who need to stay anonymous on the clear web, the regular everyday internet, in situations and countries where they need that security to avoid going to jail or being killed. And there's major bugs that have existed both in the Tor browser and in the Tor network that developers have known about and haven't addressed for a long time. Those issues being the broken security slider in the official Tor browser that leads users to believe that their security is increased just by pressing a button. But actually, in order to fully disable JavaScript in the browser, you have to restart it after switching to the safer or safest setting. This is a bug that Tor developers have known about for more than one year, and as you can see, the issue is still open. Now, luckily, this issue is largely mitigated in the last few versions of the Tor browser, because if you go to change the security level in an updated Tor browser, you have this dialog button that saves the setting and restarts the browser automatically. So that's great, but as recently as version 14.0.8, which came out less than six months ago, users were still vulnerable, yet thinking that they were safe when they ticked that safest security button in the slider. The other major bug actually lies in the Tor network itself, specifically in the route selection algorithm, not taking the risk of BGP hijacking into account when choosing the nodes that are gonna be used for a Tor circuit. There's two great papers that were written up by researchers at Princeton University. The first one was published in 2015 and is titled Raptor, which stands for Routing Attacks on Privacy and Tor, and Counter Raptor, which was published in 2017, and it explains how the Tor network could actually mitigate the problem. So the same team that discovered the problem actually proposed a solution with source code and all over eight years ago, but this fix still hasn't been implemented. Now, the BGP or border gateway protocol problem is a little bit more complex. Again, it's not totally within Tor's control, but the problem is that BGP is an older protocol that wasn't originally built with any authentication or real security features in mind. And this was created back when people just believed that you could actually trust each other on the internet. So this protocol is used for routing between autonomous systems, which are basically different entities that own large blocks of IP addresses that pretty much make up the internet. So you can think of ISPs, both local and backbone providers, data centers, big companies like Google or Microsoft, government networks, and so on as making up different autonomous systems. But because BGP doesn't have any authentication, it's possible for anyone with access to an ISP network to just announce to the internet that they control a group of IP addresses, and then the traffic that is meant for those IP addresses is going to get routed to them instead. Now, the entities that make up the internet, they have different levels of vulnerability to BGP attacks, depending on what tier of internet provider they are and whether or not they've deployed any mitigation for this default vulnerability that exists in BGP. So the tier one providers that make up the backbone of the internet, like Lumen, GTT, AT&T, and Verizon, they have the strongest protections against BGP attacks because they actually own and control all of their infrastructure. They don't pay anyone for internet access, but they have thousands of customers, which are actually the tier two providers that route back to them. Now the tier two providers like Comcast or Hurricane Electric, they're in the middle of this internet hierarchy and they actually buy internet service from tier one providers, usually multiple tier one providers, but then they also sell internet access to people and companies. And they also own infrastructure, especially in urban areas. They might even own the last mile of fiber that's going to the customer and they might even own the router that the customer is using. And Finally, we have the tier three providers down at the bottom, which can also still be internet providers themselves in the cases of smaller or local ISPs. But in the context of this three tier networks, uh, I'm mostly talking about data centers that sell bandwidth for remote servers that have very fast and reliable connections because they're buying access from multiple tier two providers. And it's these data centers that are at the bottom of the food chain that are the most vulnerable to BGP attacks. Now the Tor project can't do anything about BGP itself or the vulnerabilities 
in the networks of these different entities, but what they can do is they can change the algorithm that chooses what circuits, what Tor nodes get used to form a Tor circuit. And right now the algorithm favors speed, which means that the nodes in data centers get chosen more often than not, which are the nodes that are also the most vulnerable to this BGP hijacking, which exposes users to having their IP addresses exposed. And so if a state threat actor or anyone else is able to control a BGP enabled router at an ISP, they're gonna be able to do this hijacking attack, which happens regularly on the internet, and the attacker could unmask the real IP addresses of Tor users. It's a real threat that the devs have known about, but instead of changing the algorithm or giving end users the choice to change the algorithm how they want, they're instead waiting for these various autonomous systems to do route verification systems to deploy them like RPKI and BGPSec to solve the BGP hijacking problem. But adoption of these technologies is very slow. And like I said earlier, Counter Raptor provides a solution that would make make Tor users much safer right now, and they even provided source code that could be patched into the Tor project, but the devs choose to ignore it. Now, bugs not being fixed in the Tor network is one thing, okay? I can understand wanting to move slowly with code changes because you fix one thing and then that might break something else. And that's why I don't really hold these problems against the Tor devs as much as I do this next one, which is the complete removal of the about config option to spoof your HTTP header in the Tor browser. Now this spoofing used to be enabled by default, but over time the default option got set to false. And in the last few versions, it's been totally removed for the purpose of making Tor browser more compatible with sites on the clear web that use JavaScript, but might actually break if a user is spoofing their HTTP header agent and it mismatches with the navigator user agent property that's used by JavaScript. So basically, the devs are trying to fix the compatibility of certain websites for certain Tor users who have their browser set to the standard or possibly the safer security level at the expense of reduced anonymity for Tor users who use the safest setting since all of the additional methods of fingerprinting your OS are blocked when JavaScript is disabled. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean really quickly here. This is an older version of Tor, and this is version 14.0.9, which was the last version that had this user agent string preference available in the about config settings before it got totally removed. So if I bring up that string, I can show you privacy resist fingerprinting spoof OS in user agent header is set to false. So this is what it's set to by default. And if we go to a website like deviceinfo.me, this basically shows you the user agent strings and everything like that, that a website is able to see when you visit it. So most things are gonna be disabled if you have JavaScript disabled, which is the case with the safest security setting. Uh, but you can see the operating system is correctly being fingerprinted as Linux. And this is actually Manjaro Linux that I'm running here in a virtual machine. And we can see the user agent, um, and actually we can see the real user agent at about support. Okay, so this is the real user agent of my Tor browser. And then if we look at the user agent here, you can see the same thing is visible, Mozilla 5.0, X11 Linux. So it knows not only that we're using Linux, but it also knows that we're using X11 Linux and not Wayland or something else like that, because I do believe this is different um, on Wayland. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but anyway, it knows we're using Linux. That's, that's the main thing. Um, so if I change this now to true, right? So you used to be able to change this, and this used to be true by default uh, much longer ago. Okay, so now I'm spoofing the user agent in the HTTP header of my Tor browser, and I'm going to reestablish this connection, rebuild the uh, Tor circuit, so basically refreshing the website with a new IP address, so there's no way for it to you know, cache my information or anything like that. Okay, so page finally refreshed and you can see the user agent down here says Mozilla 5.0 Windows NT 
10.0, Win64, blah, blah, blah. So it's fingerprinting me as Windows. And sure enough, even if I go you know, to the top, it's saying that my operating system is Windows 10 or 11 version 10.0, 64-bit, or maybe I'm Windows Server 2016 or 2019 or 2022, you know, but the point is it thinks that we are using a Windows machine even though we are using Linux. And I also went ahead and spun up a Tor browser here in Windows just to show you that it reads the exact same thing. So this operating system is correctly being read as the uh, Windows 10 or 11, it's actually Windows 11 uh, operating system. If we go to the user agent string down here, it is the exact same thing that it was reading on our Linux box. Let me bring that back up. Okay, same exact thing. Maybe it's a different version of a uh, Gecko or something like that because this is an older uh, Tor browser and the Windows 11 one is running a newer one. But as far as the uh, OS user agent, you know, Windows NT 10.0, it's exactly the same. So anyone, any website you go to, as long as you're using Safest and you're not exposing all the JavaScript APIs, they used to think that a Linux machine or a Mac machine is really a Windows machine. Now let's go ahead and update this Tor browser here in Manjaro. So this is gonna install the latest version of Tor. All right, we'll connect. We'll go to deviceinfo.me. I still have the safest security setting. So this isn't gonna have JavaScript um, enabled and you can see none of the other um, JavaScript things like canvas, fingerprinting, none of that's enabled. User agent is showing Linux. Okay, why don't I try to change it? And again, you have to accept the uh, warning, right? So about config, it's like you're changing it at your own risk. There's no reason we couldn't put it in here. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't actually work, right? Even though I have it set to true here, it doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> Right, like you can try to add it in, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't work, right? And the complete removal, like the removal of, I think the machinery is the, the wording that the dev used, the complete removal of the backend machinery that made spoofing your user agent in Tor without an additional add-on um, extension, because I know some people might say, oh, well, there's Firefox extensions that can spoof your user agent. It's like, yeah, but that's gonna make you stick out more because websites can detect what extensions you have installed. That's the whole reason why the Tor browser does everything that it does without additional extensions. It's to limit your footprint, limit your fingerprint as much as possible. Um, and this is really the change that I disagree with. Not giving the end user the choice. That choice has been removed, which is objectively what's happened here regardless of whether user agent spoofing is good, bad, or negligible for privacy. And there's arguments to be made that this does indeed harm user privacy, especially for Linux users, because we actually make up a minority of the Tor user base. And unfortunately, the people using Linux setups like Cubes OS, Hunix, or Tails OS, they're the ones who need or at least want the greatest degree of privacy. But now, because their HTTP headers are going to show Linux, they're going to stick out more in endpoint monitoring or especially in server logs of seized hidden services because this HTTP header gets sent every single time that you actually connect to a, um, to a website or even when you connect to a hidden service, this user agent right here. And there could be instances where just confirming that you're using Linux or confirming that you had used Linux and that you access a hidden service on Tor or on the clear web at some point that could massively narrow down a suspect pool when the feds end up seizing one of those websites. So let's say that there's an activism page for a political movement in your country that you've been interacting with and it gets seized and the server logs show that only a handful of Linux users ever accessed that website because 
you know, Linux use is just not very common in your country. And let's say that you use Tails OS for your dark web stuff and Linux Mint for regular everyday stuff. So you're a Linux user, you're even a daily Linux user when you're not doing anything that would be considered illegal, uh, but you've never met another person in your country or in your city in your entire life who uses desktop Linux. It's just you. There's a good chance that you could find yourself at the top or at least moving your way up on a suspect list in a situation like that and it's a lot more likely than you'd think. Now, despite this being a pretty obviously bad decision, the Tor project seems to have doubled down in their May 2025 news release with some kind of coded language here claiming that OS spoofing has never gone anywhere and is here to stay. And in fact, Tor has harmonized the experience across JavaScript and HTTP headers. And again, that harmony is useful. Like I see why they did it because they want people who are using Tor accessing sites on the clear web that require JavaScript to not break, right? They want that use case to be as smooth as possible. But for the non-JavaScript sites and for the hidden services, this is going to fragment those server logs that would have only shown Windows users in the past, or maybe Windows and Android users. I think it broke up between desktop and mobile. But now as far as desktop users go, now that's gonna be split into Windows, Mac OS, and Linux users into their respective groups. So in my opinion, that feature really should be added back into the Tor browser, even if it's not enabled by default and has to be toggled in the about config. I actually think that this is the perfect way to have this set up because OS spoofing does break websites and is more suited for hidden services and non-JavaScript sites and some of those other things that at least I consider to be more advanced use cases for the Tor browser. And if the devs really do want to make a big change, I'd recommend testing out that new circuit building algorithm from Counter Raptor to help keep people safer from BGP attacks, even if it's another advanced feature that you have to go digging around in Tor's configuration to enable, there's people out there that would be happy to have it, that would at least be happy to have the choice about how they use their Tor browser.